About seven years ago when I was in the university, I tried what's called polyphasic sleeping. Basically, instead of sleeping seven to eight hours like a regular person, I slept three hours per night and I had three 20 minute naps throughout the day. In total, it gave me about four hours of sleep for the entire 24 hour period. I know it sounds quite unhealthy and difficult, which it is to a certain extent. In this video, I'm going to share with you my experience with this kind of polyphasic sleeping, why I did it, what were my results and whether or not it had any long term consequences on my health. I'm also going to have Dr. Greg Potter comment on the health effects of polyphasic sleeping and is there any science behind it. Greg has a PhD in circadian biology. I don't sleep. You don't sleep. I wait. Like I said, I did this type of polyphasic sleeping seven years ago when I was studying in the university. I went to bed at about 10.30 to 11 p.m. and I slept until 2 a.m., which was my core sleep. Then I stayed awake for about three to four hours and I took a 20-minute nap. After that, I stayed up for another three to four hours, took a 20-minute nap, up, stayed up three to four hours and took another 20 minute nap and lastly I stayed up until my bedtime. I got in total four hours of sleep per night and I did this for a hundred days. The theory behind polyphasic sleeping is that by taking several naps you can get the same effects as if you were sleeping seven to eight hours in a row. Can the theory be true that you can get the same amount of sleep from four hours instead of eight hours? No you cannot but your body including your brain actively defends the amount of a certain type of sleep that it gets, which is the deeper stage of sleep. And so during sleep restriction, it will cram almost as much of that as possible into your sleep opportunity. There are many people from history who have practiced this, such as Thomas Edison, Leonardo da Vinci, and Nikola Tesla. Thomas Edison was said to sleep only three hours per night, and he called sleep a waste of time. He took several naps throughout the day. The reason I did polyphasic sleeping was because I wanted to try it out, to see if there was any truth behind those claims. And I wanted to get more time to my day to spend it on either studying or working. This is actually the time I started making YouTube videos, and I was making videos for a few dozen of you people in my dorm bedroom. So I gained about four extra hours per day, which, you know, isn't a lot, but it definitely allowed me to do more things. I was able to get my YouTube channel off the ground and I finished my thesis in anthropology at the same time. So how did I feel during this period? Surprisingly, not that bad. Yes, it was quite difficult to wake up after sleeping only three hours, but that feeling went away quite fast. It took me about one week to get used to this kind of sleeping. And then I was able to wake up pretty much immediately after the alarm clock. It's obviously a forced sleep schedule schedule so you do need to use an alarm clock because without it you're just going to sleep in. One thing I do have to say is that by the end of the day I was quite tired and was eager to fall asleep. I obviously didn't have any problems falling asleep ever. I fell asleep pretty much immediately whenever I laid down during the naps or at the night. Compared to the regular seven to eight hours then polyphasic sleeping definitely feels much worse. Even if you get all your naps you're going to feel less energized than if you had gotten a full night's rest. If a regular seven to eight hour sleep would feel like 4.5 to 5 out of 5, then this polyphasic sleep feels like 3 out of 5. But what about my cognitive performance? Like I said, I was finishing my thesis in anthropology at the time and I was really productive. My thesis was quite long and I was like 0.1 points short of graduating with a cum laude. I was also making several videos per week on my YouTube channel at the same time. And back then I was writing the scripts and doing all the editing myself, which took a lot of time. So my cognitive performance and cognition didn't suffer, but I did feel tired. What about my physical performance? I had already been lifting lifting weights for four to five years at that point and I was decently strong. My gym performance didn't decrease during this time but it didn't increase either. My performance kind of plateaued because I was sleep deprived and unable to really push myself at the gym. After returning to regular sleep schedule and sleeping seven to eight hours I started building muscle again and getting stronger. Now seven years after the fact I'm significantly stronger and with a lot more muscle but that's also just because of muscle maturation and having more lifting years under my belt. But why did I stop then? To be honest I stopped because it didn't feel like it was worth it anymore. Yes, you get like four extra hours every day, but the quality of those hours isn't that great. The biggest reason was also me wanting to keep getting stronger at the gym. I was nowhere near my genetic potential for muscle growth and muscle strength, which is why I stopped sabotaging myself with the polyphasic sleep. I'm also now much better at time management and I'm much more productive than I was back then. I think this is one important lesson. Sleeping more doesn't make you less productive. It actually increases the effectiveness of your
your waking hours, so you achieve more with less time. Being sleep deprived might save you a few hours, but you're going to be less productive because of that. So how much sleep should you get then? It's recommended for adults to get 7 to 9 hours of sleep per night. Sleeping less than 7 hours is linked to a higher risk of Alzheimer's, heart disease and all core totality, whereas sleeping over 9 hours is also linked to a higher risk. Right now I'm getting about 7 to 8 hours of sleep every night and it feels great. My sleep trackers give me a sleep score of 95 to 100 on the majority of nights. What's more important than the duration of sleep is consistency of your bedtime. It's found that sleep regularity is equally as important as the sleep duration and it could be even a bigger predictor of mortality. I get plenty of deep sleep and REM sleep as well, about 2-3 to three hours each. This is also one of the theories behind polyphasic sleeping that by taking these naps you're able to sufficiently get enough deep sleep and REM sleep while cutting down on the amount of light sleep that you get with no consequences to your health. Light sleep also called NREM1 and 2 is the phase of sleep where your body is falling into deep sleep also called NREM3 or slow wave sleep. Light sleep isn't facilitating physical repair like deep sleep nor neurological recovery like REM sleep which is why some people think it's a waste of time. This was one of the reasons I wanted to try polyphasing sleeping to see if I'm able to get away with less light sleep. I think all stages of sleep matter. And this is clearly true of stage two non-REM sleep, which is the form of light sleep that comprises the biggest proportion of your sleep. And there are various features of this particular stage of sleep that clearly have beneficial effects. One of those is called a sleep spindle. And this is a burst of electrical activity that is important to maintaining sleep when there's a chance that you could wake up from sleep. And it's key to neuroplasticity in general. So these sleep spindles are very important to things like rooting memories from a short-term limited storage capacity vault in a part of the brain called the hippocampus to a longer-term, larger capacity storage depot is the neocortex and that in turn frees space in your brain to learn new things at the same time i do think it's likely that some stages of sleep matter more than others hence why your body prioritizes the deepest stage of sleep I didn't have a sleep tracker back then, so I don't know exactly how much deep sleep or REM sleep I was getting. But I do recall periods of intense dreaming during my naps and even one episode of sleep paralysis where I was feeling like I was dreaming, but I was also not able to wake up at the same time. Fortunately, my sleep quality right now hasn't suffered at all. I sleep great and I get a lot of deep sleep and REM sleep. So even this period of polyphasic sleeping didn't affect my sleep architecture. What about blood work? I didn't do blood work back then because I was a broke college student, but my blood of work right now and over the past few years has been excellent and I have no health problems. We know from short-term experiments that sleep restriction leads to a host of negative short-term changes. Importantly though, I think the dose makes the poison and a few weeks of insufficient sleep each year is unlikely to have any meaningful long-term repercussions if your sleep is otherwise efficient and high quality. But are there any polyphasic sleep schedules that are actually healthy for you? It's very common for people in the Mediterranean countries to take naps in the afternoon, which is called a siesta, and these people live quite long. There are many different types of polyphasic sleeping. Monophasic sleep is the regular sleep where you sleep in one go throughout the night and you take no naps during the day. Segmented sleep is when you sleep four hours per night and you have another four hour sleep during the daytime. This is characteristic to shift work or night shift. Siesta sleep is where you sleep about five to six hours per night and then take a longer nap of one to two hours in the afternoon. Polyphasic sleep is the one where you have a much shorter core sleep and more frequent naps. This is what I did and it was called the Everyman schedule. I think excess sleep restriction during the nighttime will have negative consequences on your health over the long term. However, taking naps in the afternoon has been found to have some health benefits, especially in terms of mitigating the negative effects from sleep restriction. A 2015 study found that a 30-minute nap could reverse the adverse effects of sleeping only two hours the previous night on stress and immune markers. Moderate napping among middle-aged and older adults has been linked to a slower speed of aging and slower cognitive decline compared to no napping at all. In a study done on Greeks, people who took a 30-minute nap at least three times a week had a 37% lower chance of dying from heart conditions and a 12% reduction in coronary mortality. And lastly, an observational study in Switzerland found that those who took a nap at least twice a week 
were 48% less likely to suffer a heart attack, stroke, or heart failure than those who didn't nap at all. So it looks like taking naps in the afternoon can be healthy, especially if you're not getting enough sleep in the nighttime. It could also be that the reason you see these people getting benefits from napping is because most people undersleep by about 30 to 60 minutes every night. So you might be sleeping 7 to 8 hours, but your body would really benefit from up to 9 hours of sleep. Which is why napping can be beneficial. Regardless, if you feel like you need a nap, then you shouldn't feel bad about it. However, you should be able to go without naps most of the time, because if you need naps every day, it means your sleep at night is suboptimal. You also have to be careful with not taking a nap too late in the evening, because it can keep you up at night. In my opinion, you shouldn't take naps any later than 2pm in the afternoon, and you should avoid napping up to 8 hours before your habitual bedtime. Taking a nap a few hours after waking up or immediately in the morning can also be a good idea because it means that you just didn't get enough sleep at night. A key difference between how most of us nap and how polyphasic sleep advocates nap is most of us nap so that we can get more sleep in total. Whereas the polyphasic sleep advocates are napping with a goal of reducing the total amount of sleep that they get. But napping can be a double-edged sword. For example, if you nap too long, too late in the day, then that can lighten your subsequent sleep. And some people should avoid napping and less essential for safety. And this is particularly true of people who have insomnia because a brief nap can impair their ability to consolidate their sleep the following night. In conclusion, I think that the polyphasic sleep experiment was very interesting and it definitely taught me a lot about sleep and how to nap. Right now, I'm going to stick to a regular sleep pattern of sleeping 7 to 8 hours per night and taking an occasional siesta nap at lunch a few times a week. Link to my YouTube channel. The YouTube channel, I think, is at Greg Potter PhD and the podcast is Reason and Wellbeing. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.